All right, we're going to talk about calculus and vectors, which is the uh, first few sections of uh, chapter four. Uh, and so when we're just dealing with constant velocities, which is most of our relative velocity problems, we don't need calculus. But calculus is what we do if we, uh, uh, if we have some sort of more complicated function where we've got um, a position changing in some dynamic way that's going to give us some sort of weird velocity that we need to deal with um, that we can't just get from one of our algebraic equations. Uh, and so uh, in, the, in this lecture, in these calculus notes, and this is the same notation the book uses, um, when I say r, uh, that's going to be a position vector, uh, not a resultant. So I know we've been using uh, R as the resultant sometimes, um, but for this to make sense, R represents specifically position. Uh, and the reason uh, it's R instead of X or Y is because uh, now that we're in multiple dimensions, it could be anywhere. And so you can think of the position as being a radius outwards from the origin. You can always define where you are as being some radius away from the origin at some appropriate angle. Uh, and so R is our position vector. Uh, and so if you're going to define something's position in X, Y, and Z space, uh, you need an x-coordinate, which of course will be in the x-direction, so that's i-hat. Uh, so you have an x-coefficient, uh, uh, and then i-hat to put it in the x-direction, and then the same thing, uh, a y-coordinate, and j-hat to make sure it's in the uh, y-direction, uh, and then z-k-hat. Uh, and then from here, uh, everything should be pretty intuitive. It works the same way it did last chapter. We just have to deal with all of these coefficients. You wind up doing the same problem multiple times. For example, displacement. Uh, is just like it always was. It's the change in position. And so it's going to be the change in your position vector. Uh, so that's going to be um, your... Uh, you know, your second position minus your first position. Um, and uh, we know from subtracting vectors uh, that we can deal with each one of them, uh, each one of the components separately. Uh, and so uh, this is going to be equal to uh, the x coefficient from uh, your second position minus the x coefficient from your first position in the i hat direction. And then we just do the same thing with the y's, and the same thing with the z's. Okay, hat. Um, so, uh, we have position, and it's just like it always was, except instead of having just an x coordinate or just a y coordinate, now we have an x, y, and a z coordinate. And displacements change in position, so you gotta account for the x, the y, and the z direction. Uh, so velocity, same thing. Uh, average velocity uh, is still uh, just the change in position over the change in time. And so a uh, change in your position vector, accounting for x, y, and z uh, over the change in time. Uh, the instantaneous velocity, so the velocity at a particular moment, uh, is, as just like before, found with the derivative, the derivative of the position with respect to time. Uh, so dr, dt. Uh, and so for how uh, we actually go about taking the derivative of our position vector, um, the, the way that we do that, uh, so we don't normally bother writing out v instantaneous. I'm just going to write v from now on. Uh, so the way we find a velocity uh, at a particular moment uh, let's take the derivative of our position with respect to time. Uh, and so we know our answer uh, is going to look like this. It's going to be some velocity vector, so it's got to have some x component of its velocity in the i hat direction or the x direction, uh, some y component in the j hat, and some uh, z component in the k hat direction. Uh, and we are taking the derivative of our position, uh, which has each one of these things. And so just like in calculus, when you take the derivative of a bunch of terms that are summed together, you just take the derivative of each one separately. Uh, and so 
uh, Vx is just the derivative of x with respect to time, uh, and so on. Uh, Vy is just the derivative of y with respect to time, and Vz is just the derivative of z with respect to time. And so it's nothing new. It's just now since we've got uh, three components to our uh, position, you have to take three derivatives in order to get your velocity. Uh, and the same thing for the acceleration. Uh, acceleration, uh, which is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time, uh, is going to have some x component, some y component, and some z component. Uh, and a lot of our problems might only be in two directions. They might only have an x and a y component, but like you could have an x, a y, and a z component. Um, and just like before, the way that you find the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. Uh, and so since we're taking the derivative of this uh, to find that x component of the acceleration, it's just the derivative of the x with respect to time. Hey, y is dBy dt and az is dBz dt.